Welcome to the podcast. This is, as you all know, Explore Lucid Dreaming. Can you tell everybody your name? Um, my name is Explore Lucid Dreaming. <laughs> I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't done like a, a name reveal yet. So people oh, just you not? Oh, on I... YouTube now, yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize. I thought in the um, base reveal you did the name. That's fine. The anonymous <laughs> yeah, not Explore yet. Lucid Dreaming. Or Mr. Beluga. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Beluga. As you all know, he's obviously the uh, creator of Explore Lucid Dreaming, very big channel, the biggest channel about lucid dreaming, a million subscribers, probably more now. So uh, congrats. Thank you. Um, did you, so did you think you would reach a million that fast? Like what was your kind of plan? Uh, on, on Explore Lucid Dreaming? Yeah. I mean, I didn't really know like that it, that it could be done, but I think once the first video went viral, like when I started the channel, then I kind of realized that there was the potential for like a, a bigger audience out there. So it was really neat. Like when I first got a hundred thousand, I didn't even think that was possible. It was just something I did for fun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. You know, because I remember when I think I remember when you published like your first couple of videos and I mm -hmm. saw it being talked about on I think it was Reddit. And uh, I think at that point you had about three, four thousand subs. Yeah. <laughs> and, then I, and then I checked back like a, a few weeks later and it was just I mean, I can't remember how many exactly, but it was it was a lot more. And then it just kept on like snowballing, basically. Yeah, it was weird. I think I think the hardest milestone was like 10,000. And then after that, yeah, that's kind of when I got the first lucky or like viral video and then it went up to a hundred thousand in like a couple couple days i think or a week that's amazing yeah so um maybe we should first talk a bit about lucid dreaming itself so yeah. how did you actually start lucid dreaming what was your first experiences with that i think one i don't know how i first heard about it but i do remember that when i first heard about just like the idea of it and that it was something you could do and learn. I got lucky on my first night and then I was able to get like a, a lucid dream right away from that. But it was about five or six years ago or even seven when I first heard about it. And I thought it was pretty cool. I was really into like writing down my dreams and stuff in a little book. And that was really interesting for me because before then, like I hadn't remembered anything um, from my dreams. And even just after a few days, it was like everything was super clear because your recall gets better. And that's when I really started getting into it because it was a super cool thing. Yeah, man. Would, would you say that it was writing your dreams down that kind of it was the main thing that made you start lucid dream or like start I think remembering so. your dreams? I think that's like probably the easiest step anybody can take and you can get results like right away from doing that so you know you don't even need to succeed you just need to write down dreams and they'll become more vivid which is fun in itself that's interesting because i feel like for beginners mm -hmm. people think it's quite difficult to start learning or they think it's going to take them ages but really all you need to do at least like for, mo for the most part 80 percent of the difficulty is just being consistent with like basic stuff like writing dreams down doing reality checks and getting half decent sleep yeah agree? i agree i think the the learning curve is like very steep for like mastery and for doing it very consistently like it i wasn't even able to you know consistently do them like for a prolonged amount of time um because it's just that hard like you always you, like you have to focus on it really hard and most mm. people just can't do that which is understandable but yeah like just from doing the basic things like it is possible to see some results um, which i think is really neat you know it's like you kind of get what you put into it yeah i guess like anything right yeah anything mm -hmm. in life. just like it's a weirder skill because you can't really see what you're doing it's like it's all in your mind so it's yeah. pretty neat mm -hmm. yeah and i guess for beginners it can be quite frustrating sometimes if you're putting all the effort in like you're doing reality checks trying to learn the techniques and and then nothing happens like you know i think a lot of beginners have that problem where they're trying stuff techniques or whatever but it's not actually doing anything maybe not everybody but i would say a good percentage of people maybe yeah do you have I any advice for them or or is it just is it just a case of being consistent and just sticking with it yeah i mean like you can you can try like so many different techniques and just have nothing work but i think like if people are able to make their dreams even just like a little bit more vivid i would still count that as success i think people need to like look at it that way and just like yeah you know like is anything changing and if something is then it means you're doing at least something right yeah even any improvement is is good mm -hmm. i think that's another reason why people should keep more of a detailed dream journal like not just write the dreams down but maybe like a journal about their progress in lucid dreaming as well not just what they actually dreamed about but you know did you try a certain technique and then that worked or you know did a certain reality check work more than the other ones and that kind of stuff yeah i mean the thing about it is like everybody's different so there's not one track to do it i mean if there was like one set way i feel like all i would have to make is just one video and that's it but yeah like the fact is there's so many different techniques i don't even know all of them and like cause they just keep coming out and there's so many different approaches you can take like i've read certain some books about it and 
there's like all kinds of tests you do during the day. But yeah, like you, you don't want to overcomplicate things, but you also want to keep experimenting. Yeah, exactly. I think um, there's different ways you could, because like you said, there's, there's loads of techniques and they keep on coming up. Even people on Reddit like kind of create their own techniques or like their own variations of techniques and methods. Yeah. Um, but I think the fundamentals are kind of consistent in terms of engaging prospective memory, getting reality checks in some form to show up and then mm. somehow in some way optimizing your REM sleep so whether that's you know acetylcholine inhib- uh, acetylcholine or um, anything that will boost memory like vitamin b6 or even just writing dreams down more consistently and just generally getting good quality sleep i think that's in my opinion that's 80 percent of the like battle basically yeah yeah it's definitely like there are things that you can do and certain like milestones that you can cross where you know that you're making progress that are basically universal. You know, like if you yeah. can't even remember your dreams, then good luck. Like you, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's just never going to happen. I mean, there's almost no point trying to lose a dream if you can't remember your dreams because how would you even know? I mean, yeah, it's just a waste of time in my opinion. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, part of what makes it cool is the fact that like it is possible from hearing yeah. about it to succeed on the very first night and then just completely remember everything. That's what happened to me. And like, sometimes when I've, when I forget about it or when I do something else and I come back and like, you can get a lucid dream right away, which is really neat. But then again, like you don't want to be tricked into thinking that's like, that's it. Like you have to actually put in the work and build yeah. up your skills. Even if you get lucky, like it's not really an indication of your progress. It's just, it's just luck pretty much. Yeah, that's, that's so true. And I think what people should do is when you have, because when you first try and lose a dream, you have this kind of, I guess you could call it luck or yeah, beginner's luck, or, you know, there's this excitement. And then because you're trying to do it, that that usually gives you a lucid dream, especially at the beginning. It's like very common that you'll, like you say, have a, have a lucid dream your first night. I think what a lot of people do is they assume that it's going to be that easy forever. But really what they should do is just take that excitement, just like build the momentum. And then just, yeah, it was, you know, good that you had one the first time. But now you need to actually learn how to do it consistently, like actually learn the techniques and mm-hmm. put in work instead of just assuming it's going to be like sunshine and rainbows from then on, basically. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. But it's but there's still a very, in my opinion, there's still a very uh, important place for content about lucid dreaming that inspires people to actually want to learn it. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, like lucid dreaming in YouTube, it's like kind of hard to mix because you have people who are very like, I wouldn't say they have like a short attention span, but it's just they want entertainment, and like excitement. And it's really hard to like take somebody like that or just like the average person in real life and say like you want to learn the skill you have to do like you have to read these books and commit like a lot and and do things that you don't want to do like wake up at like 3 a.m and stuff and it's just like being able to make it work for like a youtube audience is really difficult which Mm -hmm. is one of the hardest parts about my channel is like i'm trying to make things look appealing and like energetic and get people excited without giving like false hope so yeah, I think that's that's one of the difficulties. I, I would say we've probably both been criticized for like hype, in quotation marks, hypey content that yeah. just gets people motivated, but doesn't. But in my opinion, it's like you with YouTube, you won't get seen unless you have some degree of hype and excitement. And it's still an overall net win because you get more people interested in lucid dreaming than they have one their first or second time, you know, because of the beginner's luck thing and the excitement. And then that makes them that brings them into the, you know, the topic. And now they're actually, yeah. in most cases, they're going to want to learn how to do it. And they're going to be like lifelong advocates of lucid dreaming. So I agree I think with that. It's, I mean, it's yeah, I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather be known as someone who kind of like hypes up the topic than somebody who's boring and doesn't, doesn't really like pull people in because I mean, even just like looking at my channel and what I like, what, what was built, it's just so cool to see like millions and millions of people on these new tutorials come in, come into the discord and like, really get into it and then they start reading books and stuff like that i think that's the way to do it like you want to interest them you want to show them all of the cool parts about it because that's how you get someone interested you know like yeah. that's how you you come to them with these crazy uh, new hobbies they can try yeah and if you consider like the kind of the impact that it has to reach millions of people and br- who didn't know about lucid dreaming or you know they hadn't really tried and then to bring them into that topic that's quite a bit that's a big impact that it has on the world compared to the, the opposite where you have let's say you have somebody who is not good at presenting themselves they're not good at videos or marketing let's say not good at creating a good thumbnail and yeah they might be the most knowledgeable experienced lucid dreaming teacher but if they're boring and if nobody watches them 
you know, if they upload their hour long videos or two hour long videos and it gets 10 views, it doesn't really help. I mean, it helps those 10 people, of course, but it doesn't bring the topic further. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't you know, help like, get new people in. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's kind of too bad with like YouTube. Like I, I wish people had the attention span and like sit down and watch those people's hour long videos because I think they have lots of knowledge and it would definitely mm. benefit people. But at the same time, like, it's just like, that's not the case. Um, yeah. And I mean, yeah, like when I started Explore Lucid Dreaming, I did it because I thought it was a cool topic and I just had fun, like making those videos. I definitely wasn't the most experienced. I don't have like a, a, de a degree in that field or I'm not like a professional, but I just thought it was such a cool thing to like learn and talk about and share. So mm. I just you know, found the best guides I could and kind of talked about what I was doing. And, yeah. you know, those videos were so much fun to make. And I think people definitely like picked up on that. And I mean, when they just like heard my voice, they, they heard that I'm a younger person. So obviously he's not the most experienced, but you know, like I'll just kind of like learn as he does. And I think mm. it was, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's many benefits. I mean, it makes it easy to relate to someone like hearing that you're young, for example, it makes, because a lot of the audience for lucid dreaming is t typically younger people. So oh, yeah. it makes it kind of easier for them to relate on that level and then also in terms of teaching things especially things like lucid dreaming i feel like um this idea that you have to be like this qualified expert to teach something like this i think really all you have to be in most cases is just one or two steps ahead of where your audience is and it's still going to be massively helpful to them like if you're explaining something that is two steps ahead of where they are and you're explaining it really well in a fun way that makes them want to do it and it actually teaches them how to do it i mean there's of course lots of value in that so i think yeah. it's yeah it's great and also like on youtube anybody with a, with a microphone and i and an, an idea can make a video and make a channel and talk mm. about whatever they want whereas i think like more professional things like writing books or selling courses or something like that should be left to the people who really know what they're doing which is why i'd never consider writing a book or selling any anything to anybody because yeah it's just like i don't want to seem more knowledgeable than i am i just want to entertain people and some of the funnest videos i made were like my, my little animations and stuff because that's kind of what i would like to focus on yeah yeah i saw a couple of those so that's like where you animate your dreams right that's oh a yeah nice segue actually into, yeah i can imagine it's like very creative that's a nice segue into my next question which is can you tell me your best lucid dream or like one of the best hmm I think the most memorable one was one of my like first prolonged ones. It was, I remember, I think I did animate it where I was like standing outside. I realized um, like after a whole bunch of previous things that happened in the dream, I realized I was dreaming. And then I, it was like one of the first real lucid dreams that I had where like I knew where I was and everything just felt like super real. I'm like, oh shoot. So I just like jumped up and I started flying and I just remember like flying over my neighborhood and all the houses that I saw and then like into a big city. And then I think I like landed on a roof and I was just like running around and, and doing a bunch of things. That was probably my favorite one. Although I have many others, like that was probably like the most memorable, even though I didn't mm. do much. I think that's some of my favorite dreams as well. Just like, just the crazy superhero ones flying around, you know, teleporting. Yeah, it's just like once you do it and you just realize that like, it's something you can do. And it just feels so real. Like mm. my best, my best dreams are the ones that feel the most real. Because I've had dreams where I realize that like I'm aware, I'm aware in it, but everything's kind of fuzzy and I'm like floating around in the abyss. And that's not really like that, that much fun. Like you're conscious, which is cool, but then you just kind of wake up or, you know, yeah, it's just yeah. The, the ones where you're like really deep in a dream and you're aware and you know that you're like in like that you're asleep and everything's just so like so detailed, like it's really hard to describe that feeling all right what about your worst lucid dream <laughs> do you have like a bad experience or a lucid nightmare or something no i don't get nightmares that much so i can't really remember off the top of my head yeah, yeah that's <laughs> a good uh situation mm -hmm. i think i've i've had like really weird lucid dreams that kind of turned into regular dreams where i got like stuck where i couldn't wake up and mm. those are just kind of like weird because you're like in a room you lie down you're like okay i'm gonna wake up and you like get up but then you can't or in another dream. And I may have animated one of those bo before, but those ones are like weird because they mess with you. <laughs> and you, you just feel like you're stuck and then you eventually wake up. Yeah, that's that's trippy. I, I think my worst ones is where I'm lucid, but I'm kind of like paralyzed, like I can't move yeah. in the dream. So I'm just <laughs> sitting there like in a, sometimes it's like in a wheelchair. Sometimes it's um, just a random chair or a bench or something. And I'm that's lucid, weird. but I can't move. Are you like super, aware so. that you're that you're in a dream or yeah. is it kind of like a lower level where you know that you're in it 
but you don't know why you can't move. Maybe half and half. Usually, mm. usually I realize it's a dream, but I, it's still scary. Yeah, yeah. Those dreams are definitely weird because there's definitely like there's different levels, and sometimes when you wake up, you're you're just like, what was my logic in that situation? Like yeah. when you know that you're dreaming, but then you feel like there's something you can't do. When in reality, like you can do anything. It's like yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's subconscious things or yeah. Beliefs. I'm curious what your plan. Just changing subject a bit now. Like what your plan is for Beluga? Do you plan to be the biggest YouTube channel? No, that's not really my plan. I would say I, I just like making videos on there that like people enjoy. And because it's just so much fun to like get the feedback and, and like make like sometimes when I have an idea that I'm super confident about and then just like releasing it and seeing all the people I know like messaging me and say like that was really funny or something like that. I think I'm just going to keep doing it as long as I can make entertaining content that I believe in. And the channel kind of grows, I guess, like in proportion to how good your videos are. And like, so I don't really have any like subscriber goals. It's mainly just the content itself. Like I always want to innovate my content and like try to find the next thing with that and just keep doing it as long as I have fun. That's pretty much the goal for Beluga. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a pretty good goal, to be honest, just have fun with it, be creative and obviously people like it. So it's kind of a win-win. Yeah, I think like create creativity is probably like my favorite part about YouTube and just yeah. being able to to make whatever video that you can think of. Yeah, for sure. And there's so many different like different directions you could go with it and styles. Yeah. Like, how did you get into actually video editing or like video making? Well, I've always been interested, I would say like in YouTube itself. My first channel I started when I was in grade six. And I think like right away when I would start shooting videos, like I did gaming back in the day on like a super small channel. Really? Um, <laughs> but I think you just kind of learn it as you go because you shoot uh-huh. something and then you're like, okay, what do I do with it? Or there's like this section that you have to cut out. How do I do that? Um, back then I only had my, I think like my phone. So I had to download apps and like splice things out of there. iMovie and stuff like that. Uh, eventually when I got a computer, I got Premiere. And that's really when I started Explore Lucid Dreaming because I, I did kind of teach myself how to use Premiere and just like the things you could do on it. And then figured out, like, learn the things that I needed to do for that channel, which yeah. basically was put a bunch of clips, have like transitions, text, music, you know, sync my voice up with it. Can't imagine editing off on a phone. That must be. Yeah, <laughs> it was brutal. I don't yeah. think anybody should have to do that. Like, it's and edit editing gaming footage. Like, would you? How would you even do that? Would you transfer it from your console to your phone and then? I used to be like a console YouTuber, but the reason I never really did well is because I would film the like the TV screen with my phone camera. <laughs> right. <laughs> It was really bad quality, but... I yeah, wouldn't... isn't that like a weird flickering when you do that? Yeah, and it was like an iPod too, so... Because I didn't have a oh. phone till, till I was older, but it, yeah, it was like flickering, it was bad. And then I would like try to edit, like cut it together and yeah. try to like save the clip with editing. Um, so maybe <laughs> I, learned, I learned a bit from that, like cutting out boring parts, but... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, that's, that's interesting. Do you think you'll ever make another gaming channel or like go back to gaming channel? Um... I think if there's a specific game that's like really good for YouTube and there's like an idea that that can be executed, like I would never sit down and just play a game like for YouTube because that's already done. Um, Like that's already been done like a million times and there's not really anything unique. I think if you're able to make like skits or like stories through video games, then I would do that. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't know if I would be like a gaming YouTuber then or if I would just be like a like a story person. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah. I I do like creating like stories and and carrying them out on right now it's Discord but yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty like the characters you make for the on the Beluga channel is pretty funny actually. So yeah, that's, very creative. It it was like a complete 180 from my Lucid Dreaming channel which <laughs> yeah. I just realized like how much creativity I had with it like cuz it was a completely different channel. I could do anything I wanted. And I'm just like, it, it was so much fun to plan that out and to like create characters and stuff for it. How long did it, does it take you to come up with an idea for the Beluga channel? Like one of the Discord stories where you have different characters and sound effects. And I think like the the idea for the title and thumbnail of the video um, usually takes like one or two hours. And then once I have like the idea, then I just write the script for it, which it can take a long time depending on the idea, because some ideas are like harder to get a script for um, and then other ones are more straightforward like yeah. like a story related to like when your phone's at one percent well you kind of know where it's going to lead and you just kind of like fill in the gaps so it really depends but usually a few hours that's a pretty good time mm-hmm. yeah. how about you how, how long 
does it take to like get all your your research together and your topic or whatever i mean kind of depends on the on the top if i'm just responding to a question or you know a comment or something mm -hmm. um then not very long because it's just based on my knowledge experience memory but if it's more of a complicated or if i'm like presenting information like about a supplement for example or research or mm -hmm. yeah then it can take longer maybe a few hours hmm. it depends do you, know, you do depends. you write like an exact script like word for word or no no no, no. Like an I outline. Have, <laughs> yeah exactly i have like yeah uh, like keywords little, little statements and sentences mm -hmm. and then they'll be next to the camera so i just like look at the keyword to remind me and then just kind of improvise on that yeah because otherwise I don't know. Maybe it sounds too scripted if I if I were to write out an actual script compared to if yeah. I just had a keyword and then just kind of spoke naturally about it. Yeah, and like also people don't naturally talk like they would write, so people yeah. would definitely know if you're reading off something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Have you thought about doing um like a TikTok or like making mm -hmm. small pieces of uh, of your channel videos into TikToks? Um, I have. Do you already? I I know like people repost my stuff on TikTok, but they usually yeah. have to like cut it up into small segments. But I feel like I always want to just focus if I'm making videos to make them on YouTube because then uh -huh. you have more creativity and you can kind of do more with longer videos because on TikTok, like how much impact can you have on someone if you only have a few seconds before they swipe up? Um, so you, there's like only so many ideas you can do. And usually they're pretty like shallow surface level ideas, like just try to get a quick laugh before they swipe up. Whereas on YouTube, like if you have a really good idea, you make into a video it can be like an hour long and you could mm. still have success with it which like i would rather make long videos or medium length videos than like 10 20 second short videos yeah but there is a lot of people on tiktok and yeah it's it's a huge site <laughs> yeah i noticed i i think i actually saw a couple of people like reposting your explore lucid dreaming stuff on tiktok and oh yeah <laughs> um, i just yeah i just think maybe that some of the blue grinders could be translated to like a really short form mm -hmm. and they'll probably do really well because i see a lot of short like youtube shorts reels and stuff where it's very similar style you know like the quick editing entertaining storyline but condensed into a so it's engaging you know um, yeah but yeah i guess youtube is mo more impactful because it's a mm -hmm. bit longer and also i feel like when you build an audience on youtube they'll stay with you longer than on tiktok and just like you can really get to know someone on youtube more than mm -hmm. a platform like tiktok um like i don't really know. I only know like a few people on TikTok, but they're also on YouTube. And mm -hmm. when I think of them, it's like I think of their YouTube channel mainly. And um, I think like, yeah, I'd, I'd rather build things on YouTube than kind of try to get like fast growth or, you know, like tens of millions of views on TikTok. And I think also the way they count a view is a bit different. From, from what I understand, YouTube counts a view as anything above 30 or 20 or 30 seconds. But with TikTok, it's like it's almost automatic that it counts the view. So even if you're yeah. scrolling past it instantly, it's still technically a view, which is actually worthless. I mean, it doesn't they, they might not have even watched the video. They might just be like scrolling while they're looking at something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, who knows? so do you have any advice for complete beginners? Like imagine there's, there's somebody out there who's watched all of your videos or, or they've watched, let's say, 10 of them mm -hmm. and they still can't lose a dream. What would you recommend they try? I would say get, first of all, like get, get your motivation back, like watch videos on like people succeeding and like what it looks like or just create like scenarios or get all of like the goals of what you want to do. So you get your motivation yeah. back up and then really focus on like the fundamentals and like the things that you learn when you're first starting mm -hmm. like definitely get your recall going like if you don't have your your dream recall there's not really a point in doing all these other complicated things so definitely like be consistent keep a journal i would say like dream journaling is probably the most important thing to practice because once you have that then you're kind of like you have more things to work with after that just experiment with a bunch of techniques and don't give up like you just have to pick something and keep doing it yeah. and then see what happens because some like some techniques you just have to keep trying them before you know if it really works for you or not very true it's very individual and mm. yeah different for everybody cool good advice yeah i was thinking we can wrap it up there for the lucid dreaming one uh do you sure. have any final words um subscribe <laughs> <laughs> yeah subscribe to both his channels the Luger yeah. and, the and sub subscribe to lucid dreaming experience <laughs> hopefully they already are if they're watching this but yeah <laughs> cool thanks so much for coming on yeah no problem